Well, hello there, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I have a video for you on a topic that is much broader than just Swift, but of course, we're going to focus on Swift. The topic is dependency injection. And dependency injection is what I consider a classical example of a concept that is really rather straightforward in many ways, but it sounds insanely complicated because we gave it an actual name. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to change that right now because we talk about all kinds of cool Swift things on here. And I would just love to you know, make sure that you come back for future videos and it helps keep the algorithm happy, you know? Anyway, dependency injection. Dependency injection is something that you've probably been doing in your apps for a really long time. And a lot of code that we write actually has dependencies. If you ever wrote a function that takes arguments, then that function has dependencies on those arguments. If you've ever written an object a class a struct that required you to pass some objects down to the initializer, you've done dependency injection. You've actually done a specific form of dependency injection even. In this video, we're going to look at two different kinds of dependency injection, their pros or cons, why you're going to use them and why you maybe don't want to use them. So buckle up and let's go for it. The first kind of dependency injection that I'd look, like, look at is initializer injection, because that is probably the one that also helps us talk about the basics the best. Initializer injection looks a little bit like this. You've probably written code like it. I have an object or a protocol rather, that's where we kind of start because we want to be able to stub or mock this out at some point. So this protocol defines a object and it defines what it can do. We also have an object that conforms to that protocol so that now we have a concrete implementation that we can use in an app. And then we have a view model that depends on the protocol and we can pass anything that conforms to the protocol. Passing that object to the initializer of our view model is initializer injection. It's the act of passing dependencies to objects through their initializer. The nice thing about this is that we, we literally cannot create our view model without passing all of its dependencies because the compiler will stop us. It will tell us you, you forgot to pass one or more arguments to the initializer. The downside is that we need to pass every single thing from maybe the root of our app down to where we actually need it. So if we have objects that create other objects and we have a whole hierarchy of objects and we inject, let's say our data model or our data provider at the start of our app, maybe the abstract, and we need to pass it down to multiple view layers possibly, just so that a specific view can create a user profile view model. Here's what that looks like in a rather simplified version where we have an abstract, we create our object and then we pass it down to uh, a main screen and then the main screen passes it down to a user profile uh, by making a user profile view model. In your apps, there might be a lot more steps involved and what you'll find is that you're passing objects around quite a lot. That's a major, I would say, downside of initializer injection because it means that we might end up with objects that have dependencies that they don't technically need. One way to fix this is to create something called a factory. And a factory is an object that would hold on to several dependencies and has knowledge on how to make certain objects. For example, we could have a factory that knows how to make view models for us. So it could have dependencies on networking and all these things, but we could create the factory in our app struct. And then we can pass a factory around in our app. So everybody depends on the factory, but not on everything the factory itself depends on. So that's already a lot better. And it's a lot easier to write that code because we no longer need to define and pass around multiple objects. Of course, we're still passing around the factory, so that's not perfect by any means, but it works, right? It's, it's one way to achieve this. If there's any additional dependencies, we might pass them to a, a make function on the factory, like the one you're seeing on screen right now. And yeah, this, is, this isn't bad, right? You could have a couple of factories in your app and, and you can do cool stuff with that. Another approach that you might want to consider when doing dependency injection, if initializer injection is not quite to your liking, you could uh, use a locator pattern right, or a service locator. 
That is an object that is almost like a dictionary that holds on to every dependency that you might have in your app. And you can ask that locator for any dependency that you might need. Working with a service locator like Resolver or the Swift UI environment, which is also a, sort of a version of that, typically is a two-step process. It means that we need to register dependencies and we need to extract them at some point. Registering dependencies, let's focus on Swift UI, is typically done by adding objects to the environment. You can do this with the environment or the environment object view modifier, and we can then take out the objects using um, property wrappers, environment object or environment. Here's an example of what that looks like. And this example is a bit of a simple one. I wanted it to fit on the screen and um, be easy to follow. But in this example, we, we make our data provider in the abstract, we put it in the environment, and then the main view takes it back out. In this case, there's nothing in between, so we're not gaining much. Now imagine that the main screen did not need this dependency, but we needed it a couple of views down. Now we don't need to pass our data provider or view models or whatever we put in the environment around. We don't need to pass that from A to B to C to D just so that F can use it. We can instead just put it in the environment at our app root and get it out whenever we need. The downside here is that our dependencies are far less explicit. We do know when we look at that specific object that it expects something to exist in the environment, but we don't really get any compiler help there. The compiler cannot help us and tell us, oh, you forgot to inject this. It also means that we don't really see exactly where something is added to the environment. You might see that the abstract is adding this a specific value to the environment, but somewhere in the middle of the view hierarchy, we might overwrite that value. We wouldn't really know. You'd have to really look at every single individual file and actively search for the environment view modifier. That's a lot more difficult than it is to, to do initializer injection. You do save yourself a lot of typing, right? A lot of passing around. But the danger is if you forget to inject something and the view tries to get it, your app will crash. So that's another downside of the locator. Whether locator or initializer is the best, I'll leave that up to you. I think there's a use case for both, and I think it's actually perfectly fine for you to mix and match these two in your apps when you find a need for it. Certain objects have very sensible defaults, so you can actually add these to your Swift UI environment so that you never get a crash if you forget to overwrite that, or maybe you don't even have to overwrite certain objects ever, and you can always use a uh, default value. I personally am a big fan of initializer injection because it gets me a lot of compiler guided help. But whenever I make a change, the compiler is going to tell me exactly what I need to do. The downside is that in larger apps, you're passing certain objects around a lot and you get certain dependencies that you don't technically need, but you do because you're creating objects with certain dependencies. I don't mind that as much as I mind crashing when I forget to register dependency, for example. But with that, I would like to pass the question up to you. Do you have a preference? And if so, which one do you prefer? And of course, why? If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do that now. Make sure to enable notifications and all that. And then I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.